Great. We're going to talk about one more topic with um, fluid kinematics before we move on to uh, control volumes and um, the Reynolds transport theorem. And this, this topic is necessary for those and helps reflects back on what we've been learning already. So we already know if a velocity changes with location, can we have acceleration? And the answer to that is an, a resounding yes, right? Um, it's a resounding yes because even if we have a steady state situation, um, we know that simply by moving with the flow, if the flow is changing velocity with position and we're moving with that flow, our velocity is going to change, which means we have acceleration. So in Eulerian con coordinates, our, our acceleration is given by um, this formula here, dv dt plus u dv dx plus v dv dy plus w dv dz. Um, remember where our v is equal to, um, v is a function of x, y, z, and t, and is equal to u times i hat plus v times j hat plus w times k hat. All right, so the Eulerian point of view is used in a lot of contexts, not just about velocity, but also um, with a lot of other things, right? So we can talk about um, something called the material derivative. And it's, it's an operation just like um, the gradient is an operation, right? Or the curl is, a gr is an operation. Um, we can talk about the material derivative as if it's an operation where we capital D dt is equal to the following. The partial of whatever that is with respect to t plus u times the partial of whatever that is with respect to x plus v times the partial of whatever that is with respect to y plus w times the partial of whatever that is with respect to z. Um, another way, so it, it, we can break this down into with labels, if you will. This is the time changing component. And this is what we call the advective Oh, not advective, sorry. Uh, this is the convective acceleration. Um, and it's important to note that we can plug anything we want into here. We can plug velocity, we can plug in energy, we can plug in mass, momentum, um, I like to say we can plug in pizza if we wanted to. If you wanted to measure the amount of, or keep track of the amount of pizza, the acceleration of pizza in the world, as long as you can describe the velocity, so as long as you can describe the local velocity, um, which has to be a function of x, y, z, and t, as long as you can describe the velocity, because we need, remember, we need the u, the v, and the w components, and you can describe whatever else you want as a function of x, y, z, and t, you can calculate the acceleration of it. So if we had a bunch of pizzas in a river, for example, and we knew the velocity of the river, and we knew the location of those pizzas, we could calculate the acceleration. Um, and we can actually incorporate this into some really cool things if we also know that people are eating the pizza while it's going on. Like, this is a super useful tool. We can also write this in a little bit more compact way we can say that d of whatever dt is equal to the partial of whatever with respect to t plus the um, velocity dotted into the gradient of whatever. Okay. Um, let's do a quick set of practice here. Our velocity now our velocity field is equal to t sine of y i hat plus x y j. Find the material derivative of this um, system. So our acceleration, because our derivative with respect to time of a velocity is an acceleration. 
So our acceleration is going to be, oh, I don't know why I put that there, is equal to the total derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Um, and that's equal to the partial of the velocity with respect to time plus u times the partial of the velocity with respect to x plus v times the partial of the velocity with respect to y plus w times the partial of the velocity with respect to z. So um, remember velo velocity has three separate components, right, which we kind of already know because that's why we end up breaking down Navier-Stokes equation into three separate equations because they correspond to the x, y, and z components of this acceleration here on the left hand side anyway. Um, but if we plug stuff in now, we get, let's do uh, dv dt first. So this is equation one here. Equation two, we have dv dt is equal to um, d dt of t sine y i hat plus x y j hat, which is equal to sine y i hat. Great. Um, now we can do the other components of this. So we can take um, three. Let's calculate. We know there's no z component, right? So we know that dv dz has to be equal to zero. Um, but we can worry about the x and the y here. So uh, dv dy um, is equal to d dy of t sine y i hat plus x y j hat, which is equal to, if we take the derivative of both of these, um, is equal to do, 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 cosine y. Sorry, I had to remember. It takes a little bit. It's equal to t times cosine of y i hat plus uh, x j hat. Good deal. And for dv dx is equal to the partial with respect to x of t sine y i hat plus x y j hat, which is equal to zero i hat plus y j hat. So if we plug all these together, one plus two plus three plus four um, into five, we get that our acceleration is equal to um, u. So we have um, t sine of y times the quantity t cosine of theta, uh, sorry, of y, t cosine of y um, i hat plus x j hat um, plus v times um, dv dx. So we have v, which is xy, plus xy dv dx, which is just y j hat, um, plus our dv dt, which is sine y i hat. So if we collect all of our terms now, we see that our acceleration now is equal to do, 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 is equal to uh, sine of y times uh, one plus t squared cosine of y i hat plus x plus x y squared j hat. Did I miss any terms here? I did miss some terms. Oh, I messed, I messed up the uh, multiplication here. Man, this is a section you have to be really careful about. Let's be more systematic about this. Let's write everything out. That's really what you have to do. You can't do stuff in your head with this on, on the exam or on quizzes or anything like that. 
So our acceleration, let's go all the way down here. Let's write it out nice and big. Acceleration is equal to t squared sine of y cosine of y i hat plus x t sine of y j hat plus x y squared j hat plus sine of y i hat. And if we combine these terms now, what we actually get is our acceleration is equal to, combine all of our i terms, sine of y times 1 plus t squared cosine of y i hat plus, um, we're not even going to try to combine these, although we can, x times t sine of y plus y squared j hat. Oh, not actually that hard, right, to do. Um, it's just keeping track of a lot of little things and making sure you don't make mistakes. Great. We can ask ourselves too, is the flow steady? So if we go back up to our equation for our velocity, the answer to that is a resounding no. We have a dependence on velocity right here. And um, just as a heads up, we use the material derivative with Bernoulli's without really even knowing it. So if you, um, if you uh, take, remember we used uh, two directions in the Bernoulli's equation, the streamwise direction and the normal direction. Um, if you take that our acceleration is equal to um, dv dt, which is equal to dv streamwise dt, which is equal to dv stream, oh, sorry, not uh, the partial of this with respect to time plus the velocity times ds hat dt, because this is the direction. Because um, remember, our direction is changing with time here, um, dt. This is equal to dv dt plus dv ds times ds dt plus dv dn times dn dt times s hat plus v times um, so this is just the derivative with respect to time because we had to break it into multiple parts um, now our velocity times our ds dt times our ds hat ds times ds dt plus ds dn times dn dt. Now the good part here is that ds dn is equal to zero. Um, ds dt is equal to v, um, but ds dt is equal to zero because remember it's steady state. Our, our, our coordinate is not changing with time. Um, and so we can rewrite this as our acceleration is equal to our velocity times dv ds times s hat plus v times v ds hat ds. Um, where this is really just the, um, uh, the radius of curvature, if you will. It's n hat over r. It's, it's the rate of change that the direction changes with position. So all this is just equal to 1 half dv squared ds s hat plus v squared n hat over r, um, which um, this uh, v squared n hat over r we didn't talk about, but it's the normal component for Bernoulli's. And the 1 half v squared is the um, parallel component, which is what we talked about, right? Cool. Um, and the last thing I want to do 
real quick before we sign off is to, to determine, do another practice problem where we determine the convective acceleration for this term right here. And remember the convective acceleration is just the non-time dependent component of the acceleration. So um, if we have a two-dimensional problem, dv dt, oh, there's no parentheses there, let's rewrite it again, dv dt is equal to the partial of v with respect to time plus u times dv dx plus v times dv dy plus w dv dz, but remember we have no z component, so that's going to be zero. And this right here, this part is the convective acceleration. Um, so we can just plug our stuff in here, and we if we plug stuff in, we have first u, which is e to the x, times d dx of e to the x i hat plus x t squared y j hat plus x t squared y times d dy of e to the x i hat plus x t squared y j hat, um, which if we do these derivatives, um, we get this is e to the x times e to the x i hat plus e to the x t squared y j hat plus x t squared y times zero i hat plus x t squared y times x t squared j hat, which if we combine terms gives us 2e to the x i hat plus um, e to the x t squared y plus x squared t to the fourth y j hat. Oof. Not fun, but tremendously useful, as we'll see in the next section, where we will use um, the total derivative to derive um, Reynolds transport theorem. And um, once we start using Reynolds transport theorem, we'll see the power of control volumes, which is, we'll be able to do a lot of really fun problems too.